common table expressions, or CTEs, look like this. Basically, they start with the with keyword, and it's followed by a name of your choosing. Then inside a set of parentheses, you'll write a SQL statement, and then you'll invoke the CTE in a SQL statement like this. Okay, so what can you put right here? Well, a select statement of some sort. So for example, I could include something as simple as select one. So what do you think will happen when I run this entire statement? Well, let's try it out and see. Okay, so we got a one, which you probably could have guessed. All right, so is this useful somehow? Well, it probably doesn't look all that useful yet, but stay with me because CTEs do allow you to solve certain problems in an elegant way, but I'll talk more about this in a moment. Now, one way I like to think about CTEs is that they can act like a refactoring tool of sorts. In other words, if you have a really complicated query that's hard to understand, well, you can use CTEs to refactor the query and make it a bit easier to read. Let me show you what I mean with an example. So I've got this employees table, and let's say we need to write a query that returns all the employees that earn less than the average salary. Okay, so how should we write this query? Well, I'll write it as follows. Select star from employees, which I'll alias as A, and next we need to somehow calculate the average salary. Now, there are a few different ways we could go about this, but I'm gonna use a subquery. So I'll say join, then in a set of parentheses, I'll say select average salary, which I'll alias as average salary from the employees table, then I'll alias the subquery as B, and lastly, in a where clause, I'll say where A.salary is less than B.average salary. Now, let me ask you this. How readable is this query? Okay, this is somewhat subjective, but I think this query is a little hard to read, mostly because of this subquery. So what if we used a CTE instead of this subquery? Do you think it might improve readability? Well, let's try it out and see. So I'll go ahead and add our CTE by keying with average salary as, then I'll cut the subquery here and I'll paste it into our CTE. Now I'll add our CTE to our from clause and I'll run our query and we get the same result we got earlier. Okay, so is this query more readable than this one that we used a moment ago? Well, again, this is somewhat subjective, but I think this version is a little bit easier to read, mostly because I can just look at this part of the query and I largely know what's going on, but if I want to better understand what this part of the query is doing, I just need to peek up here to see what the CTE is doing. Now, this example is somewhat simple, but hopefully you can see how CTEs can make very complicated queries easier to read and understand at a glance. Now, using CTEs to improve the readability of a query is nice, but it's not the most interesting thing you can do with CTEs. The really interesting thing you can do with CTEs is a form of recursion. Okay, so what does recursion mean in the context of CTEs? Well, it's recursive because it references itself inside the CTE. Now, this concept of recursion might seem a bit fuzzy at the moment, but I think a simple example of how to do recursion with CTEs should help you wrap your head around what it is. Okay, so what's the simple example we'll be looking at? Well, we're going to use a recursive CTE to generate the following result set. Basically, we're going to create a result with 10 rows, where each row has a number going from one to 10. So to do this, I'll we'll say with, and I'll use the recursive keyword, followed by the name of our CTE, I'll call this one the counter CTE, then I'll say as, followed by a set of parentheses. Now inside the parentheses, we're going to write two queries separated by the union all operator. We'll call the first query the anchor query, and we'll call the second query the recursive query. Now the anchor query here is executed first, and it's only executed once to bootstrap the recursive query. So what do we want the anchor query to return? Well, remember, we're wanting a set of rows with the numbers one through 10. So our first query should return the number one. So to do this, I'll say select one, and I'll give it an alias of num. Now, the query we add after the union, the recursive query, is different from the anchor query here in that it recursively queries the CTE. In other words, if I were to say select num from counter as the second recursive query, the num value here initially comes from this query, so initially the number is 1. So what do you think will happen if I run this query? Well, let's try it out. So first I'll invoke the CTE by saying select star from our counter CTE, and then I'll run the query. Okay, so what's going on here? Well, it appears that I created an infinite loop, or more accurately, an infinite recursion, so I'll go ahead and kill this query. Okay, obviously that wasn't what we were wanting, but we can get closer to a working solution by simply incrementing the number value here. So what do you think will happen if I run this query? 
Well, let's try it. Okay, well, that's slightly better in that our number is incrementing, but we've still got an infinite recursion. So how do we prevent an infinite recursion? Well, the way to break out of a recursive CTE is by having this second query, the recursive query, return an empty result. So for example, I could add a WHERE clause to our second query where I say only return a result if the number is less than 10. So now when the number is incremented to 10, this WHERE clause will be false, and the query won't return a result, which will break us out of the recursive query. Now let's go ahead and try this, and it worked. Cool. All right, this simple example hopefully gave you a basic sense of how a recursive CTE works, but you're probably wondering, when would you typically use a recursive CTE? Well, recursive CTEs are usually helpful when you're dealing with hierarchical data structures. So for example, this employees table we queried a moment ago has a hierarchy to it. Essentially what we're looking at is an organization chart in a table structure, where Arthur, the CEO, is at the top of the chart because he has no manager ID. Then you've got these three VPs, which report to the CEO, as indicated here by the manager ID, and the rest of these employees report to the VPs. Now let's say we'd like to write a query that shows Randy and all the managers that Randy reports to. In other words, we want to write a query that returns Randy and it recursively returns every manager up to and including the CEO. Okay, so how do we write this query? Well, I'll start by writing the boilerplate for a CTE. So with recursive, and I'll name our CTE org, then I'll key as followed by a set of parentheses. So what do we need to do next? Well, we'll start with the anchor query. So what's the first record we need to return from our recursive CTE? Well, it's Randy. So I'll say select star from employees where the name is Randy. Next, I'll add the union all operator, and now the question is, how do we write the recursive query? Well, we know we've got to query the CTE in the second query. After all, that's what makes CTEs recursive. So I'll say, select star from org, which I'll alias as A. Okay, what would happen if I invoked this CTE query right now? Well, there's nothing to terminate the recursive query, so it would result in an infinite recursion. Additionally, this recursive query is just returning Randy's row, which isn't what we wanted. What we want to return is Randy's supervisor. So to return the supervisor, I'll join the employees table, which I'll alias as B, and I'll join on a.managerID equals b.id. And lastly, I need to modify this select clause so that it returns the same columns as this anchor query did. So to do this, I'll simply prefix the star with the alias to the employee table, which is B. Next, I'll invoke our CTE by entering select star from org, and now let's run this query. And we see the results we were looking for. Randy reports to William, and William reports to Arthur. Cool. So let me ask you this. In our query here, how is the recursion being terminated? Well, it's terminated because the CEO has a null manager ID, so it can't be joined with any other employees, thus the entire SQL statement doesn't return a value when the recursion makes its way up to the CEO. So in summary, CTEs can serve a couple of purposes. You can use CTEs as a refactoring tool to make your queries more readable, and you can use CTEs recursively to query hierarchical data structures, which is a really powerful feature. Now, one last thing. I use the excellent SQLite database for my examples, but CTEs are available in all the popular relational databases, but there is a small catch. The exact syntax you use for CTEs can vary a little bit between database engines, so you may need to refer to the docs if you're running into syntax errors. Hey, here at Mycelial, we're big fans of SQLite, and we're building tools around SQLite that will allow you to synchronize a SQLite database to multiple computers without conflict. If you're interested in SQLite and what we're doing with it, please subscribe to our channel and consider joining our newsletter to learn more.